AI, we all recognize this as a pivot moment, although we don't know exactly how, and the landscape is changing very, very quickly. We are testing our autonomous vehicles readiness at autonomous level four, just to ensure that someone can take action in case of any emergency. Hello and welcome to Qatar 365. I'm Laila Humaira and on this episode, we talk about all things tech and innovation, from blockchain-powered art to taking a ride on autonomous vehicles. But first, we explore how artificial intelligence is being used in education. Adol Halim visited three universities in Doha's education city to see how AI-powered tools are being used to create new ways to connect with students. In Doha's education city, a hot topic on university campuses is what role does and should artificial intelligence play in education. The presence of AI-powered tools like ChatGPT, which can instantly generate essays and term papers for students, has worried some educators. But others, like Georgetown University and Qatar's Dr. Jamie Olson, take a more philosophical approach. It's a partnership between faculty and students. If you approach things from a policing lens, you actually you know, can fray that relationship. It creates tensions that don't need to be there. It creates a culture of suspicion. What works is if we can convince you that your education is valuable and that what we're asking you to do will contribute to your education. Meanwhile, similar conversations are taking place nearby on the Carnegie Mellon University campus. Dr. Khalid Harris says classic AI has been around for decades, largely statistical based. More recently, generative AI has grown exponentially. But one of the concerns with generative AI is how to fact check what it produces. It is a major problem. You don't know the quality of what is coming out of these AI tools. Sometimes, and it's a whole field also in our, in our world called explainable AI, sometimes you don't even know the details of how or why the algorithms that were built have led to this kind of output, which is not great because you need to be able to verify, understand, and justify how this is working. But that's the fun part, right? That's the part where we have an opportunity to kind of work on these problems and address them, and that is what is happening right now. Till then, until we find good solutions, we're going to have to deal with it. We need to take everything that we're getting out of this with a grain of salt. This sentiment is echoed in the hallways of Northwestern University in Qatar's campus. Dean Marwan Krady says schools must teach students to critically differentiate truths from falsehoods. So critical thinking. How do you establish connections between things that you think are separate? Processes of authentication. How can you authenticate something to be true or not? That's the job of education. AI is a priority for us because we are a school of media. So we teach journalism, communication, filmmaking. These are fields where historically technology changes the field very quickly. So we are very well equipped to deal with AI. Second year communications major Ramazan Zet Pisbayev says AI allows him to work faster and more efficiently. I'm very excited about it because AI for me personally is a game changer. Simply I can just put it uh, in the prompt and get the results what I want. As AI becomes increasingly more prevalent in education, Northwestern University in Qatar has produced the country's first ever major metaverse exhibition. With so many unanswered questions about the virtual world, the museum's interactive exhibition encourages students to discuss the opportunities and challenges in a constantly changing digital media landscape. The Media Much List at Northwestern is a museum at the intersection of art, media, and technology the first of its kind in the Arab world. Its most recent exhibition, Meta What, explored the concept of the metaverse. The idea of the metaverse is something that you immerse yourself with your mind or with your body. For me, the earliest version of uh, the metaverse, this other world, is actually the novel book. We open a book, it's a novel, we immerse ourselves into the book, we read it, we imagine character, spaces, situations, and that was a form of metaverse. And uh, so the metaverse, you can argue, are always been with us. It just changed formats. Back at Georgetown, Dr. Olson agrees AI is a game changer, but also warns just as it takes its cues from humans, it's also susceptible to human error. AI is only ever going to be as good as the programmers and the engineers, those that are designing it. So we build in and we train AI on a lot of our own biases and flaws as humans. 
Bettering the lives of people is one noble application of artificial intelligence. But at the crossroads of where tech, innovation and design meet, there exists one unique digital art form powered by blockchain and sustained by investments. They're called NFTs or non-fungible tokens, which are distinctive cryptographic tokens that cannot be replicated. Well, I'm here at Fast Company Middle East Innovation by Design Summit at Mashereb Downtown Doha to meet Amrita Sethi, an acclaimed NFT artist, to find out once and for all if NFTs are a lasting trend or just a fad. Hi Amrita, thank you so much for being with us today. Now, NFTs first came into the spotlight 10 years ago, but for those who still don't quite get the concept of NFTs, can you tell us what it is exactly? It just allows you to take a digital asset, um, which normally we can reproduce thousands of times. I just even think about like, you know, a photo, right? But how do we know which is that original photo. So being able to imagine you, you've got like a physical photo and you've got somebody's going to put a stamp on the back of it to say that was the very first photo that was taken. And that's kind of what happens is with the blockchain technology. And you've said before that NFTs democratizes art. Can you explain what you meant by that? With NFTs, what happens is as the artist, you are able to, you know, create your artwork put it online, you're not just restricted to the geographic um, region of where you are, you don't need to have a gallery space, you know, don't need to invest in a lot of that money. You're able to take your art and put it up on the internet where there are billions of people have access to it and you're able to create your collectors and your communities. What role do you think NFTs play in design and how else can it disrupt or revolutionize the art world? So for me, I always say that my, my biggest aim and the legacy that I want to leave is really, I want to inspire change through art and technology. How is the new technology is going to change it? But you have to do it in a way that educates people. So in a way I call it art edutainment. So I create art in a way that's entertaining, but educational. I use them as tool brushes to showcase the new technology so it doesn't become overwhelming. Our journey of exploring the ways artificial intelligence and technology have revolutionized how we study and create art brings us now to how we travel. Technology has made the energy transition more robust than ever, especially in the auto industry. Here in Qatar, the government has revved up efforts to not only fully electrify its transportation infrastructure, it's also increasingly tapping on AI to drive the ecosystem. And I'm here at Moasalat's electric bus depot in Lucille to go behind the wheel for an exclusive look. It's small, but don't let its cute looks fool you. This compact vehicle is not only all-electric, it's also driverless and is powered by artificial intelligence. This is Moasalat's autonomous bus. Now we're here in front of these small but incredible autonomous electric buses. Can you give us the latest update about the development of these autonomous buses and how close are you to rolling them out to the public? We are testing our autonomous vehicles uh, readiness at autonomous level four, just to ensure that someone can take action in case of any emergency. The last test we did was in Lucille City, where we really tested the autonomous vehicle readiness for public transportation and public interaction within the vehicle. So let's take a ride on this amazing driverless e-bus. Sure, let's go ahead. Can you just briefly tell us about the features that we're seeing in this bus? What are the cameras showing and the sensors? Inside the bus, we have the uh, screens which typically show the passenger's uh, journey where they're going from point A to point B. But the cool thing is the cameras that people don't see, the cameras that are existing outside of the bus, there's like around more than 16 or so cameras which are continuously working for the vehicle's AI so it can detect uh, anything that's happening in the street. Moasalat's Yusail Bus Depot is capable of supporting 478 e-buses just like the ones behind me. In 2022, this sprawling site of more than 400,000 square meters earned its place in the Guinness World Records for being the biggest electric bus depot 
in the world. It's from here that hundreds of these e-buses start their journey every day, serving tens of thousands of passengers all around Qatar. But taking public transport up a notch with an autonomous system driving the vehicle poses a different kind of hurdle. The high heat during the summertime can interfere with the camera and the sensors and the way they are processing. Support from the Ministry of Transport is unwavering. And when it comes to revolutionizing mobility in Qatar, the two entities are in it for the long haul. Today, Qatar has a strategy of uh, uh, electric transformation and also a strategy for autonomous uh, vehicles. For uh, It is a five-year strategy. They all uh, like serve uh, the transformation uh, within a, like, um, a harmony with what is existing today. This year also marks a milestone for EV brands in Qatar with more international names rolling out their latest models. Our infrastructure that supports the electric vehicles is already expanding. And within coming years, we are distributing like 400 electric vehicle chargers. Back on the driverless bus, our short ride may be coming to an end, but Qatar's journey towards an AI-powered, fully electric transportation system is just getting started. From electric and autonomous vehicles to an AI-powered education system to the future of art and design, a new era of technology is being embraced right here in Qatar, paving the way for a tech-driven future. We hope you've enjoyed this episode, but that's all the time we have for now. For more, check out Euronews.com and connect with us through our hashtag. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Qatar365.